What's going on, world? Machiavelli Mills TV, man. So look, let's talk about Mr. Otto Valin and a potential fight against Deontay Wilder. If you don't know who Otto Valin is, he, he is the guy who fought Tyson Fury about, what, a year and a half ago? Gave Tyson Fury a pretty solid fight, had some good rounds against Tyson Fury, and busted Tyson Fury up a little bit, right? Most recently, he just beat up on Dominic Brazil. If you don't know who Dominic Brazil is... He is the guy that Deontay Wilder knocked out in the first round at the Barclays Center. And the commentators was like, he hit him so hard, they feeling it all the way in Brazil. And he said Brazil went, went down faster than the plate of Alabama barbecue, so on and so forth, right? Otto Valin, he's a very good fighter, a very solid heavyweight, right? He says when he was posed the question of potential fight, would you fight the bronze bomber Deontay Wilder? And he says he's open to fighting, he's open to fighting Deontay, but... The money has to be right in a fight against Deontay Wilder, right? The money got to be right. I'm listening to that, and I'm like, nah, he just knows what Deontay Wilder is capable of. He knows what could potentially happen if he fights Deontay Wilder. It ain't about the money. It ain't about the bread at all. Why do I say that? Because you ain't never, ever, 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 ever in your life heard Otto Valin talk about money at, in any of his fights. When he fought Tyson Fury the first time, it wasn't about no money. Money wasn't talked about. Money wasn't the issue in a potential rematch with Tyson Fury. It, uh, uh, recently, he ain't talked about money at all. When he fought Dominic Brazil, it wasn't about no dollars at all. But now the money needs to be right when you're talking about Deontay Wilder. Why is that? Because contrary to popular belief, even the boxers know. Even though people think, oh, because Deontay Wilder took that loss against Tyson Fury, he's done and, he, and he's washed up. Uh-uh. Nah, that ain't the case. They know he still will clean out majority of the heavyweight division easily. He will knock most of them smooth out. Still yet and still, he's a dangerous opponent for anybody. I don't give a damn what you heard. I don't care what the critics saying. I don't care what the haters saying. I don't care what all the naysayers and Deontay Wilder just biggest uh, haters and all that. I don't care what they saying. Contrary to popular belief, Deontay Wilder is still knocking out majority of the heavyweight division. Cleanly. Cleanly. Because their right hand is still devastating as hell. Right? Otto Valin knows. Yeah, he got great hand speed. I'm talking about Otto Valin, Otto Valin himself. He got great hand speed. He got some good movement, but he does not pack a strong punch in the heavyweight division. His punch don't pack enough wallop. It don't pack enough pop to keep Deontay Wilder from coming forward and off of his ass. No lie, right? He's a good boxer. Got some good skills, but look, he ain't got that power to keep Deontay Wilder uh, at bay. You know what I'm saying? And he ain't going to back Deontay Wilder up and all that. No, he's not going to do that. Also, Otto Valin lacks head movement. And if you lack head movement against Deontay Wilder, you're susceptible to that right hand landing on your jaw like a real bomb, without question. The same thing happened to Dominic Brazil, right? He don't got no head movement, and he got clocked in the first round. Otto Valin, he knows that can very well happen to him, right? And again, it don't matter if you think Deontay Wilder is the most skilled boxer in the world or not, right? Deontay packs a punch that will clear out most of the heavyweight division easily. Seriously, I don't care what nobody say. We we seen what that what that right hand is capable of. You can say all oh, the opponents was questionable, questionable, and so on and so forth. I'm telling you, if that land, if that hand, that right hand, it ain't even got to land cleanly. If it land cleanly, you out of there. But if he grazes you. Just good enough, they still dropping. They still dropping. And again, everybody talks about what Tyson Fury did to Deontay Wilder, and they're like, man, look what he did. They think everybody can do that. No, you, most of y'all cannot do that at all. Let's be real, man. Tyson Fury, a lot of the heavyweights don't have the skill that Tyson Fury has. Tyson Fury got boxing skill. I ain't gonna, I'm going to give him that credit. I ain't going to never hate on him, man. He can wake up out of his sleep and just box because that's just, that's just in him. It's embedded in him. That is his skill. And most heavyweights don't have the head movement that Tyson Fury has either. If you don't got the head moving for Deontay Wilder, your head stiff, you out of there. Even Tyson Fury with all the great head movement he has. In that first fight, let's not forget he was dropped twice with that right hand from Deontay Wilder. And the first time, it didn't even land cleanly. Hit on the top of the temple. Grazed him on the temple and still dropped him. So... Say all you want to. Talk about all, all you want to. Otto Valin knows what he's in for. So the outcome will not be the same uh, for, for most of these heavyweights as it was for Tyson Fury. You won't have that same outcome. Most of them will not have that same outcome, right? And let's talk about the Brazil fight, right? Because although it was a great performance for Otto Valin, a nice, uh, nice great win for him, he beat Brazil, no question. But let's talk about it. 
Dominic Brazil eventually started heating up in the second half of that fight, right? In the second half of the fight, he started landing some nice little uppercuts, some nice punches. And I'm thinking like, damn, was Otto Valin gassing out later on in that fight? And I'm telling you right now, if that's the case, if he's gassing out, it's going to be Luis Ortiz part three. Luis Ortiz, and it, it may be even worse because Ortiz pack a punch. He had a punch that can keep Deontay Wilder, he, that can hurt Deontay Wilder, keep Deontay Wilder from coming in all crazily because he can crack, right? Valin, he ain't got no pop like that. So it could be a worse situation, right? Because even if Valin wins rounds and, and wins rounds and hit Wilder with some punches and put together some combinations to score great rounds and copy bonks and all of that, <clears throat> the fate still will remain. He going to probably gas out in the later rounds, and Deontay going to hit him with something that he ain't going to see coming, and it's going to be night-night. Good night, Irene. It's a done deal, done dada. He going to fold like a, uh, like a lawn chair at the family reunion or the barbecue on Labor Day. He going to fold just like that. You know what I'm saying? So, Valene talking about the money and all, if it ain't about the money, nah, brother, it's not about the bread. You know what's, you know that man still is a dangerous opponent. I don't care what all, all despite what all the haters saying, everybody clowning Deontay Wilder, everybody, it's, it's popular to clown him, to, you know, talk about, oh, he this and he that, and he ain't nothing and he ain't nobody, but I'm telling you, he still is a dangerous opponent for most of your, outside of Tyson Fury, and Anthony, he still, I don't care. Anthony Joshua is greatly skilled. He's a great champion, a great boxer. I'm never going to take that away from him with a great resume. But still, if he gets hit cleanly from Deontay Wilder, he too could fall as well, right? But let's talk about the others. Dillian White, you know what I'm saying? Usyk, all of them. They get hit, they dropping. And it don't matter if you like Deontay Wilder or not, you can't, you'll be a fool to say they won't. If you don't say, or you, if you say he still ain't dangerous, if you say he's not a dangerous opponent anymore because of the Tyson Fury fight, you just a hater. You a hater. You, you know, confidence may be an issue or confidence may be in question for Deontay Wilder. But some tell me Deontay Wilder is going to be perfectly confident. Despite what you think about all the stuff that's happened recently and him getting into it with Mark Breland and accusations he's making and so on and so forth, he still is a dangerous opponent at any point of the fight. Even in the later rounds, his power still can carry. And he proved that in the first fight with Tyson Fury when he knocked, when he dropped him in the 12th round, right? So if Valine gasses out and he doesn't move his head in the fight with Deontay Wilder, it's a done deal. It's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? Because Ortiz was doing great in those both of those fights against Deontay Wilder. But eventually, he started gassing out, or Deontay Wilder just caught him with something that he could not handle. And that right hand is still lethal as hell. Still lethal. You know what I mean? And people talking about, oh, I've seen some people saying, oh, well, Otto Valin, may, he may very well be the favorite in the fight. He may be the A-side. Get the hell up out of here. Valin ain't selling out no arena. He ain't, he ain't moving tickets like that. He ain't moving them units. He not, especially in America, he ain't got that type of draw. Yes, I'm a boxing fan, so I know what he's capable of and I know his skill, but America ain't lining up to see Otto Valin. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's people going to still, even though Deontay Wilder just coming off of a loss, it's still going to be people lining up to see what his return will look like. What he going to be looking like in, a, in, this, in his bounce back fight. It's still going to be people lining up to see if he still got it, if he still got the pop. He going to be the A-side without question. The same way Adrian Broner still is a draw. So there's that, like, even after he lost to Maidana, he still was a draw because he still talked trash and he's an interesting figure. You know what I'm saying? He's an interesting guy where people are intrigued with his character, right? Deontay Wilder is not extremely over the top and just super abrasive like Adrian Broner and, and, and he don't wild out crazy like that, but... He still is an interesting figure. He is a person that people will be interested in regardless. So he's still going to be the A-side. So get that bullshit up. <clears throat> excuse me. Get that bullshit up out of here. If you're saying Otto Valin the A-side, you hating for real, for real, right? But, you know, even when I'm listening to Valin talk, he like, all oh, the money got to be right. I'm looking like, listen, if you want to fight Deontay Wilder, if you really want to and you think you, this is your best chance to fight him, he come off, he's, come off, he's coming off of a loss. And he's been on, he had a year layoff, right? So this will be your best time to try to go in and catch him. But I think it will work in the opposite favor. I think that Deontay Wilder being off a year will like give him time, gave him time to recover, to heal up. And I think he's going to be motivated to come back and show everybody that he still has a name. He still is a huge name and a huge, huge factor and figure in the heavyweight division. You know what I'm saying? 
He's going to be hungry. He's going to have that hunger in him to prove people wrong. All the boxing aficionados who were saying, I told you so about him. When he lost to Tyson Fury, everybody that was doubting him and stuff, he's going to be motivated to come and prove people wrong. And I think he will do just that. Because one thing you can I say about that brother, man, uh, Deontay Wilder, in that ring, I never seen him fold and quit and give up. Even when he was getting hit with punches that most guys would fold on due to embarrassment, I remember the first Ortiz fight, he was getting hit with some rough shots. He was in trouble, right? And the crowd was oohing and on, and it was just like you heard the crowd just, you know, raving and just in shock and just like, oh, my God, watching uh, Luis Ortiz well on him, he still had the mental fortitude. He still had the perseverance to say, I'm going to dig deep. I'm in deep waters, but I'm going to swim out, and I'm going to get this dude up out of here, right? And I think that still is going to that's going to be burning in him. That same type of uh, passion, that same type of vigor, that same type of, uh, of, of fortitude is going to be burning in him to prove the critics and the naysayers wrong. So again, once again, Otto Valene, it ain't about money with that fight, brother. You know Deontay Wilder is still a dangerous opponent for any heavyweight. Seriously, still a da dangerous opponent for anybody. So despite everybody talking crazy, despite all the hating going on, they know at the end of the day that right hand is for real, for real, for real, and the power is not a myth. It's not a joke. Despite what you saw with what Tyson Fury did, y'all ain't got the skill Tyson Fury got or the size that he has either. So that's it. Machiavelli Mills TV, I'm out. Peace.